Linus Tech Tips coverage of CES 2015 is brought to you by Phantom Glass. Visit store.phantom.glass for the best darn screen protectors out there, as well as HyperX. So our second video here at the Razer Suite is also one where I look at the future as a little bit cloudy, but I definitely believe in the premise here. This is the Forge TV. It's got a Qualcomm 805 quad-core processor. It's got an Adreno 420 GPU, so you can expect your frame rates to be high. It's got gigabit Ethernet. HDMI out, USB, it's got wireless AC, it's got Bluetooth connectivity, it actually supports Wi-Fi controllers as well, and it comes in at $99. But this isn't the first time we've seen an Android-based gaming console, and what is Razer going to bring to the table that they think is going to make this compete with, well, any other Android device that you can plug into your TV, whether it's from a small you know, company that you've never heard of before, or whether it's from someone like NVIDIA with their Shield line of tablets and gaming devices. Well, number one is going to be the price. $99.99 is going to be pretty appealing for something with these kinds of specs where you're at the point where you can run pretty much any Android game extremely smoothly, even at 1080p, 60fps. Number two is going to be, of course, the ecosystem. Razer's never one to release just one product. They want you to buy like this, and then they want you to buy the controller for it and the, uh, you know, the keyboard and mouse thing that goes along with it. And these, I'll start with this one because this is actually really cool. This is called the Turret, and it's a keyboard-mouse combo that comes with a little dock Maybe that's where it got the turret name. And the idea is to address the problem that any PC gamers who also want to enjoy content on their big screen tend to have, which is how on earth do I control a game like Civilization if I'm going to play on my TV? We've seen solutions in the past, like the uh, Couch Master is one that we actually reviewed that I kind of went, yeah, this works really well, but it's extremely bulky. And uh, you're not going to be you know, impressing your lady friend that you bring over by having one of those next to your TV. TV. This is a little bit more elegant. So instead of having a huge cushion that sits across your lap, the keyboard itself for the turret unfolds into a mouse pad, and then the mouse itself is actually very thoughtfully designed. So it's got its, um, its slippy pads all around the outside, so that even if you're right at the very edge of that mouse pad, it is still functional until the mouse is hanging more than about a quarter to a third off the edge of the pad, making the mouse pad effectively much larger than it actually looks. It's nice little touches like that that I appreciate from Razer. The cost for this one, I actually don't know. What's that one going to run you? 149? I'm guessing. 129. All right. Well, they impressed me because the overall build quality of it actually feels very, very solid. Now, this one is where they kind of got away from me a little bit. This is their new controller. Actually, very, very beautiful piece of hardware. I mean, we've come to expect this. Razer doesn't exactly do the whole, you know, 1999 controller thing. So you've got those, whatever they call them, hyper response buttons. I call them hair trigger buttons. We can call them whatever they want. They have a really nice tactile feel to them. You've got Android buttons built in for Android navigation. It is intended to be used with the Forge TV, but this one is going to come at a bit of a price. So this is an $80 controller, but this comes with their streaming software software that's going to be built into Cortex. So now instead of being locked into, well we shouldn't, we shouldn't say locked into because there are other solutions, but instead of being locked into NVIDIA's game stream, you are going to be able to use Razer's Cortex software in order to stream games from your PC. So they've actually got it running right now, and while I can't say the latency is very impressive, they tell me that behind the scenes most of the work that goes into something like this is actually really on the codex side. They're not using H.264, they're not using H.265, they're actually using a proprietary codec that they believe in the long term is going to give them better latency and better image quality compared to other solutions. Also, this is another cool thing. It's, I, well, I don't know, depending on how you look at it. Oh, I unplugged this. Fortunately, wait, what? I thought it was running out. No, it must not be because this doesn't have an HDMI out running to it. Okay, well, whatever. There was a green light on it. Now there isn't. Um, <laughs> Good news, the light's back on and I can finish up that thought where I left off. So the good news is that you are going to be able to use third-party controllers, whether they're Bluetooth or Wi-Fi Direct, which is great because, you know, if you want to be that guy who has the one nice controller for himself and then, like, the crummy controllers for all of his buddies, then, hey, you can be that guy. But the bad news is that if you want to take advantage of their end-to-end -end latency optimizations, you are going to benefit from the firmware upgrades and tweaks that Razer is 
putting into their own controller for the best, most low latency possible experience. Uh, in line with that sort of open attitude whole thing that they've got going on in their suite today is that unlike NVIDIA Game Stream or even Limelight for that matter, you are not going to be locked into an NVIDIA graphics card to run this. So AMD Radeon owners rejoice. That is to say, as long as they improve the latency a fair bit over what they're doing now, because I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to like be that guy who shows how far off we are right now. Although the beta doesn't even start for another couple of months and they've got, what was it, 10 million users you guys are rolling out the beta to to, uh, to test this out for you guys? Anyone with Cortex ultimately? 10 million, users. 10 million current users. So hopefully that gives them a little bit of feedback and helps them turn this thing into something that totally kicks ass. I do believe in game streaming. I do believe in Android as the next gaming platform. So whether I believe that Razer's gonna be the one to, uh, to crack that egg or it's gonna be someone else, I'm glad they're throwing their hat into the ring because this is a very beautiful little piece of hardware. They actually had the same team that worked on Blade do this. So it uh, shouldn't be surprising to anyone that I think it's the bee's knees. All right, guys, thanks for checking out video number two here in the Razer suite. Don't miss any of our CES content. And remember, our trip to the show this year was powered by Phantom Glass. Visit store.phantom.glass for what is in my mind the best screen protecting option you can get for your smartphone. It's Gorilla Glass, which means it's nice and clear. It's got that nice feel, unlike those plastic ones. It works with third party cases, just like the one that I have on here right now. And it's very, very easy to apply without getting any bubbles under it whatsoever. In fact, I'd say it's hard to get bubbles under it. Also sponsoring our ship is HyperX. So you want to check out youtube.com slash HyperX for great gaming content. We've got links to both of those guys in the video description below. Also make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of our CES videos here at CES 2015.